This is my uh, latest uh, big tree collection of these are all my uh, cuttings that I've managed to uh, so far get rooted and potted on. The centimo was just burst out with new growth, whilst this one was completely dead after four weeks, apart from the leaf growth. And I had to cut it and restick it, and using 35 watt heat, it's just started giving off roots but it hasn't done anything on the top for the same amount of time that I stuck this one and that's the difference under the same growing environment that's what happens sometimes no thought of your own Centimo that's how it started off Rondé Bordeaux without a doubt takes the longest to root. This one was stuck at the same time as this one, at the same time as that one, and took about, these ones on the left took about three to four weeks, this one took about two months. This one took about two and a half, three weeks, but I did it in Coco Qua, uh, and uh, created a moisture in a container but the transition and shock between qua into a potting mix completely stunts and stops the growth and in some cases actually kills the plant so that's the difference between that one and that one started off the same just like the others but then i had to re-stick it cut it down and start it again in coco qua and I've managed to get it to root and then it's in this sort of stunted growth state compared to its brother or should I say sister good to go I've got three of those all roughly around the same sort of size these are my new ones which I've only had uh, for about two weeks they had no light on a heat mat of 35 degrees the heat mat was actually designed for dogs it's great works 24 by 7 easy controllable it cost me 19 pounds so very happy with the heat mat anyway the results are roots long as yellow roots coming out lovely this is a Melcourt propagated pine has it propagated it's, combust, it's not kind of something like that. Got a few bags of it left. Fine pine bark. And the white stuff is oyster shell. Figs love calcium. Whenever the leaves were going yellow, just topped it up with that. And they had all this beautiful green, lush growth. So we might as well start with the cuttings. The other two normas yellows. There's another one. This one, I believe, has a tiny little root I saw poking out. Oh no, this is the Oh yes, this is the one that has to see. Look, this one hasn't. They're big old cups though. They're bigger than a pint glass. This is the one that has some rooted, but you can see you have plenty of top veg. So it's either got small roots close to the body, or it just hasn't rooted yet. Go on to the side. This normal's yellow is rooted. We've seen that one. Remains under the mat, on the mat, and under the lights. This is a yellow long neck. Got some a new bud just about to pop. All right, Cookie, good girl. And 
there's the root. This is the one that has one little tiny one sticking out. See, there's still quite a lot of moisture in here. Before I was cutting the sides, but now I just do the holes and then the bottom. I think it still holds quite a lot of moisture, which is probably a good thing. There's more roots there, you can see. So that one's just coming along. So that one, and Norman's yellow, see? Two different cuttings. No, not Norman's yellow. This, this Norman's yellow. Hopefully in the next few days, week, we'll start to see those roots appear. Now move those to the side. And this is the yellow's long neck. Look at that. Boom. Same holes at the bottom. Boom. Still loads of moisture in there. Oh well, the, the dry surface always gets pretty dry anyway because it's bark. Fine milk quartz, fine bark. Really hard to get hold of. You have to buy tons of it. Well, close to that. But you can see if you dig down, there is a bit of dampness in there. Not much at the top. You don't really need a lot at the top. It's down in the bottom there. You can see on the sides where the dryness and the bottom wetness meets. It's trickling down my hands. I got watered yesterday with rainwater. It's a bit soaking at the moment. So anyway there the cuttings. These ones were done. I say with these are probably now about coming up to three months old. Even the stunted one. These ones were done in the last four weeks. I bought these cuttings from Bulgaria. The first ones also came from Poland, I believe. These ones came from Bulgaria. Centimos was a free gift because I spent a fortune getting the Rondi Bordeaux and the Goudezur, Goudezur in. And then I found out they weren't necessarily the best hardy fruit for our climate and you're only gonna get the brevas to ripen if you're lucky. So I did some more research. Obviously we have our brown turkey and I've got a, a mid-sized young plant over the other side of the garden, which I could show you later. But what I found out was that these were the hardy ones. And this is an English grown Celeste from London just make out on the very bottom of this tip gets into focus I don't know if you can see that but the buds are just starting to open of this very thin arm and that's how it arrived to me and uh, yeah well if we get some shoots there hopefully this bud down here can develop and then we can have a much stronger we'll see another one in fact i've got three of them i believe three celestes very old i mean there is when i scraped back there is a still the cambian layer a green layer that difficult to get the focus on this but you can see that these cuttings are very old and not fresh and there's very little activity going on. Yeah, very little, so not expecting. These are all stuck about 10 days ago and they've had their first watering since that first duck. This one, I mean, this looks like a piece of oak tree who knew knows a fig tree real old looking beast for cutting now thicker cuttings are supposed to take a lot longer but then i've also heard that the thicker cuttings tend to then pre 
become much more vigorous because they have all this stored energy in these thick pieces. Again, I didn't do anything with this cutting. All I've done is sheared off the bottom, well, scraped off into the green cambium layer and then used a IBA rooting hormone. I had powder that I use. So not expecting anything from that for a long time. But I'll just keep on doing it exactly the same way as I've been doing it before. That's the Celeste we've already seen. And then Desert King, another really hardy. Not as hardy as the Celeste. I think for beginners I've been told that Celeste will actually pro provide in our climate fruit regularly. And that's obviously what we want as growers. Uh, it fascinates me how the propagation side, creating roots, which then create little shrubby bushes and then grow into huge trees. So that's the Desert King, and I'll keep, um, I'll keep you guys updated with this one, see with these Celestes and the Desert King. Rare as rocking horse to get hold of a, a cutting like this. And that's why I took them at this quality, con uh, sorry, this quality. I mean, normally you'd have like tips and buds, and, you know, green shoots and you, that's my fig. And my yellow neck, it's actually got a fig on the end of it. Have you ever seen anything like it? I've looked at hundreds of videos of cuttings and propagation and I've not seen one of these. And I know realistically there's probably no chance of that thing ripening. But I just don't know, it looks great, doesn't it? We'll see what happens. Worst case, it'll just fall off. But I suppose energy is going into producing that fig rather than producing the leaves and growth before the dormancy of winter arrives. And it being a yellow long neck, which is not necessarily the best for our climate anyway, but I do have this sunspot which is sheltered from wind. It's pretty roasting there just for me to stand still. So you never know if we have good weather. But still, do worry or don't I pinch off this little thing. It's my first fig and I never expected to get it on a cutting that's, I mean, you know, four weeks, less than four weeks stuck, maybe three. I don't know, it could be two and a half, three. But the first two weeks definitely had no light on bottom heat. And then when the light came on, it was only an LED, small LED, I'll quickly show you that. My little grow room tent I made out of a coat coat stand. And in here, there it is. That's it, little LED light, 20 watt I think it is. Shines through the broken shelf. Could have removed the shelf, but I like the idea that the shade is, bro is broken up by shade. And the ones on the left, the most recent ones on the right. And the underneath, you can see, you probably can't see, but under here, we have a little doggy. Heater mat. And the mat's there. It's so easy. I can turn it off and I can change the temperature. And that cost me 20 quid. So, I just have some cuttings underneath my telly. strawberries, uh, sorry, my tomatoes. This is that Leon guy on YouTube with his self-watering containers. That's where I water down to the reservoir. And that's my exit hole. And these are uh, Masakota tomatoes. Anyway, and the strawberries and other cuttings. The 
dot on the map that the dog peed on. And this is the brown turkey. And I have to admit, this is what I bought. I did some research, I shopped around, and the old railway company sold me this. I think it was like for £32. And what a bargain.